everybody. This week we're going to be doing a lot on weighing and mass and capacity and finding out what's heavier and what is lighter. So there's lots and lots of different tasks for you to do this week and hopefully you have a lot of fun with this. There's not a lot of sitting around this week. We want to be as practical as possible. Um, mummies and daddies, you're going to need a matchbox for a task later on in the week just to give you a little bit of warning um, and if you pop to a shop anytime soon. Brilliant. Okay, so we're going to be doing some weighing today and we're going to be looking at something, if something is lighter or heavier. Now I've got some little animals on my picture and they're all lifting some weights and we're gonna be thinking about things that are lighter. So you might be able to lift something that's a bit lighter or something, if it's heavy, might be really tricky. Now, when we do our measuring, we use lots of different tools to help us. And this is called a scale. Now a scale helps us find out how heavy something is. And we're going to be looking at whether something is light or heavy. Now I'm gonna need Miss Ransom to help me out today because what you guys are going to be doing, you're going to become the scale. You are going to be a human scale. So you're going to be just like this. Now, Miss Ransom, I think you've got some dinosaurs to help us, I haven't have. you? I have got some dinosaurs. Now, I've got a little one with a spiky back and I've got this big one. <gasps> okay, should we find out okay. what happens when we put them onto our put scale? Put a little one in there. Let's Ooh. have a look. Oh! Well, we know that the little one is heavier than nothing. <laughs> what do you think about this one, Miss Bowden? Heavier or lighter than this one? I think it could be lighter. Mm, it's bigger though. Hmm. Let's find out. Oh, the tail's gonna, gonna have, have to, to go up out of there. Oh. Which one was heavier? Can you point to the one that was heavier? This one. And which one was- Because he's made it go down further. It has, and what about that? that so that one's lighter. Than this one. Amazing. Should we have another go? I think we might have some more dinosaurs. Okay. Which one should we leave in, do you think? The heavier the one. The heavy one. Let's take him out. Because I think that's the smallest dinosaur we've oh, got. We've got some very big ones, Miss Bowden. Oh, what about a pine cone? <gasps> oh, that is because they're about the same size. And in my classroom, my dinosaurs live near the pine cones in their tray. <gasps> I think Should one of the see? mummies gave us those. It feels well. quite light. It does. Ooh. But it's quite big. It is big. Hmm. Should we find out whether it's I lighter so. you or heavier? <gasps> oh! It was much heavier. My goodness. I wonder if we put the little dinosaur in with the other dinosaur, Ooh. whether it would be the same. Shall we see? There he goes. Oh, oh nearly. We need something really quite little. I've only got very big things. What about Let a pen? Me see. Oh, what about a rubber? You ready? Oh, oh too, too much. Too much. We need something a bit lighter than that. Ms. We Ransom. need to make them balance, don't we? We do. Oh, I think we've done it. So a pen, a little dinosaur, and a medium dinosaur are the same as a pine cone to make it balance. Brilliant. So today what we would like you to do is become human scales and you're going to be doing exactly the same while being the human scale and you've got to ask for a little bit of help. So to start with, we're going to have a look at which one is lighter and which one is heavier. So I've got a lunchbox and I've got a teaspoon. I wonder if you could do that at home and find out which one is lighter and which one is heavier. What do you think, Miss Ransom? Mm. Well, spoons are metal, so they're quite heavy, but the lunchbox has got lots of things in, so I think the lunchbox would be heavier than the spoon. Should we try? <gasps> it was the lunchbox. Brilliant. Okay. Which one is lighter this time? Well, you could definitely go and do this and find out a pair of socks, or your school shoes. Go and find out before we find out together. What do you think it is? Is it lighter or heavier, Miss Ransom? Mm. Socks aren't very heavy, are they? No, which one's lighter? So I think the socks. Let's try it. Ah, oh, did you get the same answer? 
Brilliant. Sorry, it stopped filming halfway through. Um, could you have a go with maybe a ball that you can find around the house? It doesn't have to be a basketball. It could be a football or a bouncy ball. And then some stickers. Oh, I wonder which one's going to be lighter and which going to be heavier. <gasps> what do you think is heavy, Miss Anderson? Hmm, I think the stickers. Well, there's more stickers. Oh. 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 Even though there was more stickers, I didn't get that one right. It must have been the ball. Oh. I wonder if the children got it right. Yes! That time, that was better, wasn't it? Which one's lighter? A book or... I don't know if you can see that. Let me just zoom in. Or a piece of paper. <gasps> Ooh, that's a good one they could do as human scales. I bet they've got those at home. Very good. Brilliant. We're going to finish it there. Let us know how you get on with your human scales. We can't wait to see some pictures. Hi reception, good morning. I want to talk to you about your literacy job for today. So hopefully you have all read or you've watched the story of the dirty great dinosaur because your literacy jobs this week are going to be all about telling that story in the right order. So let's have a look at some of these pictures. These are pictures of things that happened in the story. So here's the dirty great dinosaur and it says, how's mum made the dirty great dinosaur dinner? Hmm, I wonder where that came in the story. That doesn't sound like the start. What do you think? Hmm. Oh, what happened here? Dirty great dinosaur. Looks like he's made a big mess. He's picking up some clothes and he's... He didn't tip the dog out of the chair, did he? Oh dear. I hope that wasn't at the end. I hope he was a nice dinosaur at the end. Oh dear. What's this? I'm hungry and I've come to eat you. <gasps> uh oh. Did that happen at the beginning? In the middle? Or at the end? What do you think? So we've shown you some of these pictures to give you an idea of what you could do. What we'd love you to do today is to draw some pictures to make a storyboard. So you could just use three pictures and draw a picture of what happened at the beginning, what happened at the middle, and what happened at the end. Or if you're feeling really clever, you might fold a bit of paper into six boxes or draw six boxes in your workbook and draw six pictures. I'm going to show you, this is what it could look like. So you could draw your dinosaur and what he did at the beginning, in the middle. What did the dirty great dinosaur do? What happened? And at the end. Now, don't worry about adding your labels or adding your writing to the bottom today. Because we're going to do that on a different day this week. The whole week is about this story. If you do you want to do a bit of writing, we'd be very impressed. You could do some speech bubbles like we practiced when we did Owl Babies to tell us a little bit about what the Dirty Great Dinosaur said or what some of the other characters said. Can you remember that word characters? It means the people in the story. So there was a little boy, he wasn't there, there was a mum. You might draw them and draw a speech bubble to tell us what they said. Now, I cannot wait to see your pictures of the Dirty Great Dinosaur because it's a really, really fun story. Okay, see you soon. Today, we are going to be learning all about where fruit and vegetables come from because this week we're going to be doing some design and technology and we need to know where things come from so that we can make our final product. And at the end of the week, we're going to be asking you to make some potato salad. And potatoes are a vegetable. So I think it's really important that we find out where they come from. So people often buy fruit and vegetables from the supermarket. I'm sure you've all been to a supermarket before, but have you ever wondered how and where they are grown? So, how did potatoes grow? Does anybody know? Could you maybe tell your mummy and daddy and pause me for a minute? Well, potatoes grow under the ground. They're not like an apple tree where you can pick them off a tree. They grow 
underneath. So in this picture, you can see that there's lots and lots of mud and there's lots and lots of green plants. So if we dig that plant up and you give it a good shake, there's going to be lots of potatoes underneath. The, so the leaves grow above the ground and the vegetables, the potato, grow below. And each plant will have lots and lots of potatoes. Maybe this week you might like to plant some potatoes. They won't grow that quickly that they're ready for your potato salad, but they might be ready in a couple of months. Carrots. Carrots are very similar to potatoes. The top of the carrot, this green bit, grows above the ground and the orange bit, the vegetable, grows below the ground. Now, normally when you pull a carrot up, there won't be lots and lots from one plant, there will just be one carrot. Sometimes you're lucky and get one that's a bit wonky and has got lots of different bits um, coming out of it. But if you can see in this picture, this gentleman has been growing carrots and he's pulled up lots and lots of really long carrots. Broccoli. Broccoli is a really interesting one and it doesn't grow below the ground this time. It grows above it and this, the broccoli, is actually the flower of the plant. It's not like a pretty flower, like we normally see, like those white daisies or those yellow sunflowers, but it's the flower of the green plant. So we eat the flower part of the broccoli. Sprouts. Sprouts are interesting. Now, I personally am not a massive fan of sprouts. However, lots of people absolutely love sprouts, and they're really interesting because they grow on this really, it's like a tree, and it grow, all the sprouts grow along the edge of the stem of the tree. And so they can start off really small at the bottom, and then they get bigger. Now, they're a leafy green vegetable, and the plants grow above the ground, and they're like a mini cabbage. So you might have had cabbage before. So a cabbage is about this big, and a sprout is about this big. Maybe you can try some sprouts, or maybe you tried some at Christmas. Um, so, how do fruits go? Fruits are a little bit different, and we have talked about a couple of them before, because we grew strawberries in the summer last year, and so I think a couple of you got to taste some strawberries when we came back to school in September. Now, strawberries are very small, and they grow above the ground, and they always need warm weather to grow. Potatoes, because they're below the ground, may not need the sun as much as strawberries do, but they won't turn red if they don't. We'll do one more, Miss Ransom. Apples, we've just talked about apples, haven't we? So apples grow on tree and I, trees, and I know that Mr Murphy has been planting some apple trees this week for when you return back to school. And they normally, we do grow apples in this country, but sometimes we have to get them from other places. And there's loads of different types of apples as well. How do you like your apples, Miss Ransom? I like mine in a crumble. Mm. I quite like having an apple at lunchtime. I eat an apple most days. You do, don't you? You'll have it as part of your lunch. Maybe you can have an apple for your lunch today. See you soon. Hi everyone, it's Miss Hunt here. I'm going to read you the guinea pig party. Guinea pig party. Ten little guinea pigs dancing in a line. Bump, bump go the guinea pigs. And then there were nine. Nine little guinea pigs think party games are great. Ouch, squeaks the biggest one. And then there were eight. Eight little guinea pigs munch cake that tastes like heaven. One gets greedy, eats too much. And then there were seven. Seven little guinea pigs doing party tricks. Boing, boing, go the guinea pigs. And then there were six. Six little guinea pigs love to jump and dive. One bumps his nose and starts to cry. And then there were five. Five little guinea pigs pass the parcel on the floor. One gets cross about her prize. And then there were four. Four little guinea pigs pop balloons with glee. One floats up and up with his. And then there were three. Three little guinea pigs playing peekaboo. One goes off to hide instead. And then there were two. 
two little guinea pigs were worn out from so much fun. Bye bye, waves a guinea pig. And then there was one. One little guinea pig who wants to play again. He shuts his eyes and makes a wish. And once more, there were ten. So let's go all of the guinea pigs with all the numbers from one to ten. Okay, I hope you like that story. Bye.